What's up, you bunch of Jody jumpers? This next episode, <laughs> it's for the military guys out there and have to deal with the whole phenomenon known as Jody. Jody. And if you guys don't know who Jody is, he's the dude who shows up to bang your woman while you're deployed. Not that you would know about that or anything. How many Jodies would you say got paraded through your house while you were gone? Oh, well, no, it didn't. Uh, in my opinion, because my, my ex-wife was pregnant while I was deployed. Well, so, that, I'm just saying. I don't know. That, I don't know. That, that can I, still I, happen. I, I don't know. I, well, I can't get knocked up. No, listen. Uh, put it right in the warehouse. <laughs> put it right in the warehouse. Wow, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't, I, I'm not really sure that happened or not. Well, there's no way to know for sure. No, no. But, but I've seen lots can... of guys just get decimated by the whole Jody thing. Oh, yeah. yeah I probably, uh, I've, I myself have been Dear John like two or three times. And then I've had to deal with hundreds of soldiers who got Dear John uh, and how much of a fucking mental clusterfuck that whole thing is. So Jody is like an actual piece of military vernacular. Yes. So Jody's the dude. Jody is who, the who handles business while you're gone. That's abs. That's absolutely correct. He's the uh, <laughs> he's the booth attendant at the Rooster Roller Coaster. Yes, and and there's been a few uh, incidents on on post housing uh, yeah. with uh, dudes discovering Jody in their house and a uh. extensive beatdown with a with a dog attack ensued. <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> This is what happens when you try to jump on the rooster roller coaster at Skeeter Point. No, no, this guy. Hell out of here. This guy was uh, from Alpha Company, Second Ranger Battalion. He only weighed like a buck sixty. Two weeks, uh, we're out in the field. Comes back, and uh, like quite literally, there's this dude in there in his house who's this six foot five huge dude. Yeah. So literally, he's like, "Motherfucker." <laughs> So he's trying to beat this big dude up, and he's doing okay, from what I've heard. I mean, <laughs> I wasn't okay. I wasn't an actual uh, direct witness, but then he's like, uh, uh, he's like, wait here, opens up the dog kennel, get him! Yes, <laughs> his German Shepherd bulldog mix. Ooh. Oh, it was bad. And it, like, yeah, the dude was like two eighty, a six foot five. And but you know what? You're not a tough guy when you have an 80-pound dog hanging off your arm going like this. Ah, ah. So he's like, good. <laughs> the MP, because I read the report up at the, uh, when I was on SDNCO, yeah. staff duty NCO, because you get bored. So I open up the incident report log, and I'm like, huh. oh. oh. I read the whole thing written, you know, I have witness statements the whole time. <laughs> And here's the best part. He just got an Article 15, had to do like a 25-mile road march, and basically got a slap on the wrist. Nice. Because like, I remember the Sergeant Major, he was Leon Guerrero. And this is, again, I wasn't in the room, but this is how he was. He's like, oh, Ranger, uh, um, I understand uh, you're on the blotter. Could you please uh, fill me in on the details? So he, like, tells the sergeant major about the guy and the dog thing, and he's like, okay, Ranger, well, it's obvious you were emotionally charged at that situation. We understand. We understand. <laughs> but you're going to do a goddamn road march. <laughs> and, you're, and you're, like, standing in front of him, like, that seems fair. That seems fair. Yeah. All right, let's do this. <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> uh, that was a good, I forgot all about that story, bro. That's funny. Uh, this post comes from identitydixie.com. It was sent to us by a fan of the show, and they wanted us to talk about Jody. So here it is. Oh, let me let you or let me tell you about the infidelity loop. There's a word missing there that exists in the military. This is the slum version of what you said. You are an 18 to 20 year old woman. You and your young, often the same age boyfriend, are so happy that he joined the Army, Navy, Marines, etc. Patriotism flows through your bones, and as the girlfriend, you endure two to three months of waiting for your boyfriend. Both of you decide to get married because you're in love, and you're going to be that perfect patriotic wife. Because that's totally what happens. Yeah. Your family and friends, who you've been around your whole life, are so supportive. You feel the love. And Leave. the adoration from them. Leave. Leave. 
but <laughs> it's not enough. So you go to get more at the bar bar. You know what I mean? <laughs> My husband is deployed. Total cocks. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, when I was in the 9th Infantry Division, punching the shit out of that balloon. Now. You always knew when one of the battalions was going to the field. Oh boy! Because that Friday, the bar is packed with a bunch of women who have tan lines where their rings should be, and they're out there dick shopping. Oh boy! <laughs> I hope they brought a bigger <gasps> satchel. Oh my god! Jail. As the woman, you settle into your new base and get base housing as well. However, it starts dawning on you that your husband is gone more often than you like, especially if he is in the infantry. Hell yeah. True enough. Additionally, all that friend and family support is hundreds, if not thousands, of miles away. You can't just pop on over to Mary Beth's house and watch a movie anymore. She has her own thing, and you start losing touch with your friends. Additionally, your family is so far away that you can't see your mom and dad either. Probably, <clears throat> you're missing out on a lot of extended family. And this, listen... This sounds to me like this woman is building a case for justification. This is a sympathy play. Yeah. Well, it's not my fault. I don't have a support structure. So I decided to build one out of caulk. <laughs> How's that working out for you? Lincoln logs. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you punch the wrong balloon knot and pull out too fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I broke one yesterday. <laughs> It's disgusting. I'm, I'm not saying. into that personally. I I'm mean, there saying. are dudes I'm out there who, who like it, and uh, I hope you don't get monkey pox. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Mm. Or pride pox, as yeah. we call oh, it around here. Oh, my God. <laughs> you try spousal support groups, but most of the women there are with higher-ranking military men, and it makes you feel uncomfortable because your husband is just a PFC. You, as the wife, decide to explore the military town, but that military town isn't what you thought it would be. It's filled with car dealerships with insane loans and businesses that prey on assured military money. This feels nothing like the small-town patriotic feeling, but it is a microcosm of the military-industrial and, complex. And you want to know what's out there also? Mm. Whores. Lots. And lots of whores. And lots of whores. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, outside Fort Benning, they, they call it Victory uh, VD Lane. Uh, I'm sure uh, Riggs probably has a frat house right there on the strip. He might. Uh, he's got to be dead. <laughs> he's that gotta dude's got to be dead. I'm sorry. That dude, uh, yeah. That dude had so many points in VD. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Yeah, yeah. and I was only in charge of that guy for like six or seven weeks, and he had VD almost every week. <laughs> Just bag it, dude. Always, always bag it. You have no idea what these women are doing when you're not with them. Like after the whole syphilis thing, he got moved somewhere else shortly after I lost track of what was going on with the Oh, block. when it turned out that the chick that he gave it to was underage? She was 16. Allegedly. I, I, I think he got sent to the uh, re-education camp on post. <laughs> <clears throat> and if you don't know what that is, it's just a whole... Uh, if getting VD every week for Lord knows how long isn't going to teach you a lesson, I doubt re-education is going to beat that into your thinking, mate. Yep. Carry a fucking condom in your foot, soldier! <laughs> no. <laughs> that, that, that's a knife hand all day long yeah. because all fingers are pointed at you. Because, uh, listen, man, it's it's just nasty. Just nasty. Yeah. It's very nasty. Quite quite disgusting. I mean, what... Uh, what what part of the flow chart of insanity are you like, this is a good idea. I don't know anything idea. about this woman. This wasn't a good idea the last time. I am having sex with her 45 minutes after I met her. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> what could go wrong? Uh, you know, the good idea fairy usually oh. brings condoms. Yeah, VD. All right, VD. <laughs> it's going on sick call. Get the fuck out of here. Who wouldn't answer? <laughs> yeah. What are you going on sick call for? All right, VD. VD. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> that sick bastard. That's one of those instances where men actually can be a mind reader. But only for other men, apparently. Yeah, I guess. You're not going to tell me, huh? All right, VD. VD. Well, you had VD last week. So we're <laughs> yeah, going to VD, VD again. again. <laughs> You're going for the gold. You're going for the record. You're going to collect him like Tom Brady. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's the Thanos of STDs. He's just collecting them all. Sooner or later, he's going to snap his fingers and half his dick will blink out of existence. 
When your husband comes home, he's tired and at times angry. You don't know what he's going through at all, but slowly he's starting to become a different person and not like the boyfriend you knew and loved. Mm. More excuses. Yeah. He's not the man that I fell in love with. Therefore, I was completely justified doing anything and everything to betray him. Listen, the brass gets the ass, but the isolation Ah. does the devastation. Yes, it does. He looked handsome in his uniform, but he kicks off his boots, collapses on the couch, and just plays on his phone. He doesn't talk to you much. When you when you have relations, it's like it's more for him than for both of you. You try to understand, but you just can't shake this feeling of loneliness. Wow, this person's really trying to stack the deck in their favor. Yeah, well, what about the dude? I mean, he literally, yeah. if he's in the infantry, he probably comes home once in a while. He's fucking burned out and tired. Mm-hmm. Listen, that's a hard-ass motherfucking job. Yeah. Wow. It just You can see the manipulation, mm-hmm. the gaslighting, the tactics. This is how women, and sometimes men too, I mean, more and more men are being raised ex- almost exclusively by women now, so yep. they're starting to, to fall for this crap. They're acting just like these chicks. They think justification somehow wipes the moral slate clean. But yep. if it were reversed and happening to them, they would still hold you responsible. Just, just stop. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> just, a done deal. Just Forget stop. It. I mean, oh my god. Oh, but yeah, like I don't know, man. My heart breaks for these guys have to go through this shit. Oh yeah, mine too. And when we get to the end, I'll, I'll make a point on this. But this is well documented. Anyone who knows anybody in the military knows about stories like this. They know that they happen all the time. When we used to run PT, we used to sing Jody Cadences. Just the fact that there's a, a Jody, and as soon as you know, I read this to you and said the name Jody, you knew exactly what it was about. Yep. Stereotypes don't fall out of the sky. No, I, I can't tell many times. Like, ah, Jody's <laughs> banging my wife. I'm like, God. Oh, God Freaking Jody. And after 30 years, there's maybe... Two to four couples that are together the entire time. Everyone else been divorced, married three, four, five fucking yeah. times. And yet the Pentagon wants to publish their Leave it to Beaver numbers. Oh my we, God. Only, we only have like a 5% divorce rate. I'm like, I literally, BS. I'm like, are you out of your fucking mind? Yeah, you have a 5% divorce rate for people currently enlisted. You know, when they're not at home and they don't know that this has been going on, then they finish their tenure and go home. Then they discover the devastation, and it's, then the divorce rate jumps to 90%. Oh, even on active duty, the divorce rate is nowhere near 5%. It, no. it is I love 98%. How they, as soon as I read that to you, you were like, what? What? <laughs> Like, <laughs> just the, the, the tangible rage on your face. I'm like, I, I'm like, because they're trying to lie to me or and gaslight yeah. me. Oh, I must have been wrong. Fuck you. And this was before their retention numbers were totally in the shitter. Yeah. At, at that point, they just had to worry about Xbox bodies. Now they got to worry about gender theory. No, it's, it's a cluster fucking a half. Bro. It won't go broke, biatches. Ugh, terrible. They go on here. So you decide to get a job. PFC pay isn't that much anyway, and it doesn't hurt to have some spending cash. While at that job, you make friends with your coworkers. Some of them are young women who are in the same boat as you. Uh, excuse me. These young women, being between the ages of 18 and 22, decide that they need to invite you out to clubs and stuff. Yeah, because misery loves company. Meat clubs and stuff. You know, the ones that beat you about the face. Fort Lewis, back when I was in there, it was called the Madigan Club. And that thing was a meat market and a half. (laughs) I bet. Oof. Yeah, women who go out to clubs and stuff don't just stand in a circle around their shoes and phones and dance. They're they're there shopping. They're out there looking for another pole. Yeah, it's a deli counter and all the meat is behind... The register, if you know what I mean. A zipper. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Spring. Uh, You start drinking a bit more, even though back home it was only a few wine coolers for a buzz. Now it's hard liquor. This is a more... Oh, well, I'm... Blame it on the booze. I can handle myself with a few wine coolers, but the hard liquor... Oh, you can't blame me. Hey, look, there's a reason why I call rum cup my balls. Yeah. To say? This reads like an accountability shield. Yes. The whole thing. Uh, You say, 
oh, I'm married after getting attention from men at first, but the attention is just amazing. You love your husband, but Mm -hmm. you start resenting his absence and attitude when he gets home, when he is home for that matter. Oh, my land. Here we go. Listen, you married a soldier. You move on to on-post housing. What the fuck do you think was going to happen? I mean, if she's actually hanging out with women who are in the same boat as her, some of these women probably have men in their families that served at some point. Possibly. Don't you think they would know the deal? Or perhaps it's this. They love the idea of tying one on with a dude that's never going to be there with a pre-packaged gift-wrapped set of excuses that they can post on the internet to justify all their actions. Yep. He sends home his check, he's barely there, and you get to take your wedding ring off any time you want without judgment. Yeah, and you can literally have a smorgasbord of cock. <laughs> a conga line. Because, yeah, there's a... A cock line. <laughs> it's a conga line of dudes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> See cucumbers poking through a chain link fence. And a lot of times, these women will go off post, do what they got to do, so no one sees what they're doing. Yep. And they don't tell people they're married. Or if they go out in a gaggle or a herd, then they're just or, one or of a, a gang. School all or doing whatever. the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> a school of fish, That's if you know what I mean. <laughs> Uh, and they're all trying to find Nemo. And some of them want to find Chad or Tyrone, but <laughs> inevitably the anchor goes home with Nemo. Because <laughs> <laughs> Nemo's got to fall on the grenade. Oh, I love you too, Dory. What? No, never mind. Terrible. Just terrible. One night you go out without your wedding ring. Wasn't I just saying something about that? There you go. And you start chatting up a guy. This is totally not your fault, right? Because you've given us all the excuses, so, so now when the ring off, yeah, now when you make the the conscious decision to leave your wedding ring at home and chat up another man, yeah, he seduced me. Yeah, all right. It wasn't my fault. I would be faithful to my husband as long as I could keep all these damn sea cucumbers out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> the gonad gag. How about whacking them away instead of whacking them off? Whack away instead of whack <laughs> off. I like it. There's a bumper sticker for a Sarastitude salad. Terrible. You tell yourself it's just for attention. Besides, one of your other friends does it as well. Well, that makes everything better, right? Yeah, because women don't keep women single, and misery totally doesn't love company. <laughs> <laughs> the drinks get to you, and you start saying, F it. This man isn't even in the military, and he invites you and a friend to come back to a party at his place. Uh-huh. You forgot the word sausage. Is that uh, net, uh, what is that name again? Oh, Netflix and fuck. <laughs> it's Netflix and chill, okay? You got to try to keep it on the... Keep I'm a realist. The That's what's going to happen. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, or crave and misbehave. Hulu and do you. <laughs> <laughs> Crave and misbehave. <laughs> Disney Plus and anal guffs. I don't know. It's all terrible. Hulu in you. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. The drinks get to you and you start saying F it. Okay, I already read that. Sorry. Eventually you wake up half naked next to a man named Jody. He's nice and he likes you. You did it with him and cheated on your husband. The rest is all she wrote. Now here is the one-two punch of pure self-serving stupidity. This does does not absolve military husbands because these redacted vulgarities cheat a bunch also because they're young, dumb men. Boom. Oh, listen. Uh, <laughs> if you're in the infantry, standard infantry, and uh, you're married... There isn't really a lot of opportunity for a dude to go chase down Poon. No. Now, if you're single, well, then, you know, all bets are off. But, you know, that's the way it is. It is the way it is. Listen, I've, I've, I knew, I'm not going to say his name, but I had a guy in the 9th ID moved all the way to Fort Lewis with his high school sweetheart, now his new wife. 
And uh, they were together from like eighth grade all the way through high school. Oh, wow. Quite literally, he is in the Army for 18 months. And and while we were away at the MFO, she was just going to town. <laughs> Every night was pound town in there. Yep. And he found out about it when his neighbors, like she was so stupid. She was on post housing doing this. And his neighbor's like, hey, man, there's a bunch of dudes coming over your house, and it's not looking good. No. And he was crushed. That's, <laughs> yep. But, uh, you know, it's when you're a man and you're doing this, though, you are a redacted vulgarity, and you're young, dumb men. Uh-huh. When women prey on these dudes because make no mistake that's oh, exactly what's happening that, here yeah that's exactly what's happening these are all my reasons yeah well reasons in this case are just excuses for you being a a, a bone gargling harlot gonad gagger charlatan gonad gagger <laughs> <laughs> you're juggling of two balls of worms at the same time <laughs> wow uh, I hope you filled out the coitus consent form, dudes. Do we have to do a show on that? Yep. That's and just fucking funny. She wraps up here and says, but this gives you an idea of the same sad story that happens every time. Young people get married too young and don't understand the sacrifice involved in military service. That's that, absolutely accurate. That part I can absolutely agree yeah. with. Yeah, but the rest of it was a big pity play. Yeah. Yeah, you can't hold me responsible for my decisions. It was the isolation. It was the booze. My friends were all doing it. And, you know, he seduced me. Never mind the fact that I chose to go out without my wedding ring. Yeah. Well, wow. I, I, like, you're gone all the time. Like, what the fuck? I'm in the army. You know the... F- yeah. What the fuck? Or th- even when they're not in the army. They yeah. use that excuse. Oh, you're gone all the time. You were never there for me. Well, it's because you demanded all of this shit that we didn't need. So I have to work two jobs in order to give you the lifestyle that you've become accustomed to, or which apparently overtime. I'm still going to have to provide you even after we get divorced. And there you go. Yeah. You were never there for me. I was out paying for all the shit that you wanted. Yeah. I've heard, uh, listen, I've had, I've heard it all from my soldiers. Now it's Ugh. another one. He's never home. He's not emotionally available. That's so stupid. We're financially, uh, we're not making a lot of money. He's a fucking E4. <laughs> what, what do you think? He's got, you know, He's shitting money? Yeah. No. You would think, right? Yeah, you would think. I, I just, I mean, there was a video that somebody sent uh, on Gab. Uh, once and back in the day, and, and I can actually find it here. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna show it here. I've been trying to figure out a way to to use this video on the show. Now is as good a time as any. So I'm gonna find it. I saved it because I'm like, holy crap! What is it? And I don't even know if I can actually use the uh, the download tool to grab it because it's on Gab, but I can show it this way. Oh, okay. Oh boy, yeah. Here we go. So what you're saying, you know, about the keeping up with the Joneses or Jamal, this is the perfect representation. My husband says he's upset with me because in his words, sweetie, you need to stop spending so much money on DoorDash. Ordering it three times a day is not appropriate and we need to start living within our means. Honey, it sounds like you have an income problem, not that I have a spending problem. Start earning more money and we won't have these issues. So I took his credit card that we share and I booked a vacation for my daughter Richard and I. We're staying in a hotel tonight, and I hope he enjoys that I charged $8,000 to his credit card. Make more money, darling. Yeah. Yeah. This, these are the kind of women who go after military men. Wow. Women like that. That, that's, that just infuriated me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You gotta check your check your blood pressure and make sure you know it's yeah. not pounding right out of your neck. Wow. I look little I'm gonna reach for the screen and just like choke the shit out of that <laughs> For a second I thought she had two kids, but I realized she was just filming Standing in the front mirror. Of mirror. Yeah, I thought that too until I saw like the hand yeah, on the, uh, on the mirror. She's doing the Roma army approach <laughs> to filmmaking. Make more money. Make like, more money. Whatever. I'm sure Jody's not gonna come and visit you in that hotel room at all. Yeah, that bitch is gonna get divorced. 
Oh yeah, it's yeah. it's on. It's on like Donkey yeah. Kong. If you have a wife doing that kind of shit and you can't trust her, you need to just get yeah. that shit away. And she posted this video to the internet, knowing full well everyone's going to see it. Everyone is going to see it. She's going to get a whole bunch of shallow validation for women who are just as disgusting as she is. But what she doesn't understand is that this is going to be admissible in court. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, and is there? Uh, I mean, we don't know who this person is. So we can like no, it was reposted that. from a TikTok account. I would love to be able to like look in and find out and see what happened to this fucking bitchy ass woman. <laughs> well, you know what? If you guys have seen this video and you know where the rest of the story goes. Send it on to us because we're always interested. And we yeah, want to we'll, hear your stories, We'll do dudes. an update. Yeah. yeah, we want to hear your stories. Send us your stories, even if it's something that happened 20 years ago. If you think that it can benefit the generations of men that are coming up behind you, not in that way. Yeah, yeah. we need to talk about it. We need to talk about it because, because that's why we're here. There's, like, nobody out there talking about the horrible train wrecks that are happening to men today. Yeah, it's in, because no one cares. No one cares. Once we turn 18, we are utterly expendable. They are. Except for, you know, the whole thing where we built society on our backs and now we're the ones sustaining it. Yep. And you know, listen, like most people are like, oh, yeah, it's bullshit. You're not expendable. I'm like, well, did you ever see the pictures of the cemeteries overseas? Yep. I, hundreds of thousands of our soldiers just buried there, left there, fuck it. Yep. Thankfully, 461 dudes are not in the ground right now because we decided to drink, talk shit, and call attention to this insanity. <laughs> yes, we did. And that's why we want your stories, dudes. Send them to us. Even if you come across crazy stuff like this, this Identity Dixie site with these stories in here, send those to us too. Yeah. We'll do videos on them. Yeah. Let's do it. Do it. Do it, man. Do it. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. Take it easy. And uh, don't marry women like this. No. If you're in the military and you have a girlfriend, just... Tell her bye. <laughs> Might be easier than dealing with this. Yeah, because, you know, your career is going to be over. Your, your chain of command is going to be all over you when you yeah. fucking can't pay credit yeah. cards. It, it might seem like a good idea at the time because, hey, I'll get paid a little bit more money. And, like, just you know, PFC pay isn't that much. Oh, it's nothing. And then I get to lock that one in. <laughs> It'll be different because she loves me. I mean, back when I was in, I think I made, like, when I was a private... I started off like five sixty a month, yeah. And then uh, as a PFC, I made like just shy of nine hundred bucks, yeah, a, a month. That's it. Yeah. And you send all that back home oh. to the ex slewer and Jody. Yeah, because you know. Yeah. She's buying the 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 boff for your for her bung. Yeah, because Jody doesn't like to use uh doesn't they like to use the hefty bag so. Yeah. It's uh, Plan B all the way. <laughs> yeah, and and, P and BOF stands for beat off fluid. Yes, and uh, that's why the first thing that you do when you get home is ask her if she wants to take a shower with you, because that way you're not getting the unexpected cream filling when you go to hollow out the donut. If you know what I mean. God, you don't need to hose off a used crevasse. No, you don't. That's not. And, that's and you not... definitely don't need to lick it clean. Oh. I'll see you next time. Oh! Ah!